Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to the forum. My name is Abbott Bailey. I am the canon to the ordinary for the Diocese of California. For those of you who have no idea what that means, uh, it means I am something akin to the bishop's uh, deputy. And I am thrilled to be uh, here with you all this morning, and especially here with uh, Suki. Since 2012, Grace Cathedral has chosen an artist in residence to create original art around the theme that the cathedral has each year. And this year, the theme is truth, the truth about ourselves, about each other, about the world in which we live, about God. And when we thought about artists we wanted to work with who might help us see truth in a new way, we immediately thought of Suki Bryan, whose beloved sky steps, if you all remember those, the image of the sky reaching up the great, uh, great steps of the cathedral to the Gaberti doors, was such a success in 2017. Suki's work over the course of her career has focused on the resonance between the cycles and elements in nature and human experience, seeing ourselves in nature and nature in us. Her installations during her residency, both outside and inside the cathedral, were timed with Earth Day, Pentecost, National Ocean Month, and this month, last week's Global Climate Action Summit, convened by Governor Jerry Brown. As her residency draws to a close, she joins us today to talk about her inspiration and her work. So please join me in welcoming Suki Bryan. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you for being with us um, all year here. Uh, we're going to start off, uh, we're going to go way back. We're going to start off, um, uh, hopefully, ease into this and take you back to your childhood, <laughs> all the way all back right. to your That's childhood. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> what was your experience with art as a child? What was your first memory of making art, and when did you start painting? Um, I grew up in Connecticut in a home um, that had a lot of uh, kind of art materials around all the time. So I just remember really early on uh, painting on an easel that my mom had set up in the dining room. I mean, it was set up, it had paints all the time, and you just went over and painted. She had been an elementary school teacher. And so I just remember this wonderful childhood of going from painting to the plasticine clay, which was kept on a shelf in the mud room, and just all these projects. And um, it was, I loved it. So that's, that's the earliest memories. So you've been painting since, for a long time, since an early, since you were a child. And I think my mom has saved almost every piece, too. So. <laughs> Is it displayed all over the... It's in a portfolio <laughs> that kind of goes like, <laughs> like that. Yeah, excellent. Do you remember one piece in particular as a child? Um, I do remember doing... We, we, My dad worked in New York City, and I um, remember doing a painting of him uh, in his office, and it's a it was a painting of him on the phone, because I thought that was his job, talking on the phone. So <laughs> he's a lawyer. So. so it probably was his job. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. <laughs> In an interview you gave for the catalog of your glacier paintings, some of which are hanging right outside the, the room here, you might have noticed those as you were coming in, you tell a story about seeing Monet's water lily uh, paintings in Paris. Could you tell us that story? Yeah, um, so my family moved to Paris for three years for my dad's work, and we lived right near the um, um, Musée Marmottin, which is the Monet museum that's based in the house that he, that he owned. Um, and it was just a walk across the park. So we used to go there kind of often. Um, and I was 9 to 12 years old when we lived there. And I just remember sitting in front of um, one of the water lily paintings with my dad and thinking how lucky Monet was to do this and to be able to you know, move the paint around and make these, these pieces. Um, and it just stayed with me. Uh, and I think it was, it must have been one of the first times I thought about an adult doing something that I would might want to do. Mm -hmm. So it, Was that when you first thought you might be able to have a career out of 
painting? I don't think I art? really thought of it that consciously, but it was just stuck, struck me as like, like, wow, he's, there was a lucky person uh -huh. to do that. So when did that transition happen from thinking, imagining him as this lucky person that got to do this to thinking, wait, I, I get to do this. I can do this. Um, I was always involved in the arts and always did a lot of creative work. Um, all through high school, did theater and dance, a lot of dance. Um, and in college, I studied English and fine art. Um, uh, but I sort of resisted going into painting in a way like mm. I didn't, I was went to Yale and I did not take painting because I thought I would like it too much and I wouldn't do my other classes and I might like flunk everything and, and drop out. And now I, and now I realize like that's a sign of that you should go that way. Like, but it took me I had to it took me a while to get around. So, lovely. Um, you received a fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts, and with that uh, support, painted a series of work based on the environment in Ireland and uh, Iceland and Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, what appeals to you about those landscapes? Did you travel there? How did you spend mm. time there working on those pieces? So um, I did travel there. I had done a lot of work. Um, I was in graduate school at the Maryland Institute of Art, and I did a lot of work in the cornfields right around um, Baltimore and worked my way up, did some work in Maine, um, and it's just got more and more attracted to more reduced landscapes where you can kind of see the geology. And I thought that um, Iceland and um, Scotland would be places where that was even more apparent, where you could really see how the land was formed. And was really lucky to get an NEA grant that I could use. Um, and it was pride open. I could use it for anything. And I used it to go to those places mm -hmm. um, and did mainly work based on Iceland. Uh, which is one of the newest uh, pieces of land on the earth, along with Hawaii. But unlike Hawaii, nothing grows, so you can actually really see the lava rivers and everything. It takes a long time since it's so northerly for anything to grow besides moss. Um, and Scotland was interesting, and I wanted to see that because that's one of the oldest parts of land on the earth. Um, and I did some work based on that, but really Iceland with the new land, um, and you could see just how the eruptions had happened. There was nothing erupting when I was there, but you could it was still hot, and you could see exactly how everything had come about. And it happened to correlate when I was um, just by chance pregnant with my first child. So the idea of new life coming out of nowhere and new energy and explosive energy really kind of connected in a way that was fun for me to paint those things. Yeah. Um, what were specifically some of the places where you were in Iceland? So I went to um, uh, Gadafoss was one of the waterfalls that was really, I felt like when I was standing over um, that waterfall that it was almost like a kind of early baptism for my mm -hmm. child. It was so moving, this waterfall that uh, just pounding, sort of reverberating through you. Um, so that was one of the spots. Yeah, I was there last year, actually about huh. this about this time, and I remember that landscape really does sort of reverberate through you in an uh -huh. interesting, uh -huh. in an interesting uh, way. Did you think at all about climate change when you were there? I'm, I'm thinking about the um, um, Christiana Figueres, who was at the Global Climate Action Summit um, a couple of weeks ago. She's the architect of the um, Paris Accord. And she was telling the story of how she got into, um, how she re-upped uh, her time with the UN, and that led to the the Paris Accord. And her, and and that happened by coming to her family. She's from Costa Rica, and her family wanted to go to um, to visit a glacier. There's not glaciers in Costa Rica, and and she went there, and um, you know the glacier was was bare, and um, so it was through seeing this you know, both tragic and beautiful, um, having this tragic and beautiful experience that led her. Um, so I was wondering, did you have, were, were Not you yet. kind it was, of... It was 1994, okay. so, I mean, I think that people knew, and mm -hmm. I can't remember when Al Gore's movie came out, but I was not aware when I was there that that, that was kind of something that was going to impact that landscape. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so it's lovely that you have these paintings that reflect then, 
the mm -hmm. the landscape then as it as it continues to evolve and emerge. Um, switching to your next, uh, let's talk about your residency in Denali. Yeah, so there I was aware of, <laughs> that was 2008, I got a, um, I was artist in resident through the National Park Service up in Denali, Alaska. The National Park Service has a number of artist residencies around the country, and it's usually a part of their kind of education arm of the park. And um, in Denali, I <clears throat> they have a cabin that's right in the middle of the park, so I was able to stay there for about 10 days. It's short. They have a short summer. Um, so they just have three artists that kind of rotate through. And it was really amazing. It was the most remote and um, intact kind of landscape that I've ever been in. I grew up outside of New York, and I live in this area. So just never seen anything where all the species are still there. Um, and the vastness of it, the park itself is the size of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So that took hours to get to the cabin where I was staying. Yeah. Um, and I was a mother, so all of a sudden I was like alone, and that was good for 10 days. <laughs> I was sorry for 10 days. So time to think. Um, but it was really interesting to see this. I was interested in seeing a place that was the glacier, the whole ecosystem is glacier-based, so every all the plants and all the animals are dependent on kind of the Alaskan cycle of from snow to ice to melt. So, and... So when I did, I didn't actually end up doing that many paintings or drawings there because it was uh, kind of weathery, mm -hmm. even though it was August, we had snow and rain and all kinds of stuff, but I took lots of photographs and did years of work back in my studio here. Um, and I knew I was painting a natural system with these ice pieces that fall off and melt, but it was already accelerated in 2008 and a little out of whack where it's melting faster, then it's building back. Mm -hmm. So, and I, people said, do you want to go back? And it's, I don't know if I, I know it'll look different even for when I was there. Yeah. So. Is that, there's a picture of you with, um, uh, doing some sketches, I believe, and there's a fox in oh, yeah. the in the in the background. Yeah, were you aware of the fox? When were you oh, aware that there's this so fox watching you <laughs> paint it or was, sketch? It was really. I was so uh, that was one day when I was able to work outside and I laid out a piece of paper. And when I work, I get pretty lost in it, and I was just painting along and um, looked up, and the fox was right on the edge of the paper, just watching me, and. Um, I sort of stopped, and then it ended up running off. And I don't know if it was curious about the smell of the paint or what it was, but it was really amazing. And the other wildlife thing that happened was there are a lot of grizzly bears in that area, and the cabin um, had uh, shutters that I was in a note that said, like, Dear artist, be sure to close the shutters at night and the front door. And the shutters had these uh, huge nails sticking out on the outside, that you close to, so that so no bears could would want to tamper with it. So that was slightly alarming, but um, uh, the the bears they just they were busy feeding their young, and they actually were not at all interested in me. I, but I did have to spend the whole time, any time I was outside, singing and talking to myself and making sure the bears knew I was there. So, but at one point I had worked in an area, and. Um, there was a little bit of moss that had been turned up. Um, and I thought, well, that's weird. And then the next day, I looked out the cabin window, and there was a bear that was peeling up that moss and looking for grubs. So it was obviously like the bear's refrigerator. So I thought I should maybe not work there again <laughs> in that spot. So. <clears throat> well, lovely. Well, let's switch into your residency here. You were asked to create work inspired by the truth of, of climate change in, um, in connection with the Year of Truth here at the cathedral. And um, in my homily last spring that opened up, that uh, kicked off your residency, I said that your art is an invitation to be drawn, that I found in it an invitation to be drawn into conversation with creation. Um, that it opens us to hear the voice of creation, not just in abstract generalizations, but to hear and see in the particular. You know, you, you, you paint your art as reflective of the, the particular. The braided rivers and glaciers in Denali, um, the waters of Bernie Falls, the landscape of, of um, Iceland. Um, so nature is clearly integral to your work. 
Um, can you tell us something about the conversation that you have with creation through your work? Hmm. Um, it, it seems to be something that I can um, sort of put everything in as, as imagery and as expression um, and, and see everything in. It just it, it seems endlessly um, a way to express what I believe and what I think and what I'm going through and also gives back what it is mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So and there there were periods like when I was in graduate school where I thought well maybe I should see if there are other other um, kinds of subject matter that I might be able to use to express ideas and they just I, they weren't as flexible or something for me so I don't know if that answers it yeah, at all yeah it does okay. it does it's um, I love the what you describe um, let's see if I can find it here. Um, I pursue specificity in observation to arrive at an extended vision but also pare away detail to open the way for metaphorical and emotional possibilities. There are, they are a fusion of the concrete and the symbolic, reality suggestive of inner experience. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I see that really reflective in your yes. art, in that conversation, I love that. Um, so you brought a lot of work uh, to the cathedral during your residency. So let's talk a little bit about what you specifically did here um, right. with the cathedral. I, I brought I some slides. I know you have slides. some slides. Yeah. So um, it was just such a wonderful six months and really nine months getting started. But um, And the cathedral has just been amazing. I'm so grateful um, to everyone. They... Uh, the Guberti Foundation and, and Rebecca and all the staff just for their support and their willingness for me to take over these major parts of the cathedral um, and do projects. The first one we started off on Earth Day doing um, a uh, piece that was on the front steps on the uh, corner. Um, and this is a model. Um, I it was tricky to figure out how to do these step pieces because <clears throat> they go back in space and up and they, the, the image gets really distorted. It was a photograph. So I, um, in trying to make a model, I had the idea of using the boxes and boxes of Legos that we have up in the attic and actually built the steps and then took the photograph and um, cut it in the strips that would be uh, to scale for the steps and then kind of laid out how the image might work. I had to find a waterfall that was really wide because um, the steps are 44 feet at the bottom of the that sort of corner. Um, and it turns out there are these websites where people are experts on waterfalls and rate them and describe them. So I was able, to, and you know, California doesn't have that many waterfalls compared to other parts of the country. So I was able to see that Bernie Falls was really wide and I needed one that there was enough detail and variation that you could see something. If it was just all white, it wasn't gonna show on the steps. So Bernie Falls was magnificent excuse me, magnificent, and just, I was able to photograph it and um, use it. This, so this was the steps one, which was a symmetrical image, and this actually was a square. It gets that stretched by the steps. Um, but the, the corner had all these sort of jigs and jags in and out, so it was interesting to try and make the image work with these changes in shapes. It was really fun, and I had to do actually a lot of math to make sure the image like stayed in the right spot. Um, and this is a movie of all the volunteers putting it together. Um, my husband said when he saw this, it didn't feel like we were working that fast. <laughs> so. But it, so I printed it out on paper in these long strips, and then um, and I, I have a printer that I can put a roll on and just keep printing and printing. And then, um, oh yeah, there we are. We're, we're, we're glad it's all up. Um, and I used wheat paste so that it could be removable. There's a French photographer named J.R. who does these great big black and white photographs, and he has, does sort of the same idea, and so I I borrowed that from him, but they're, so they're sort of graffiti art, except not. But the but there's they're removable, temporary, um, and I just think it's amazing that um, that the cathedral let me take over a space <laughs> like that. And I really wanted the viewer to feel enveloped by it. 
Um, I've done a couple of other large pieces. This is a sky piece that I did down in uh, at Stanford. So it was a sky kind of in the shape of a globe. That's at the Clark Center, which is one of the science buildings. Um, and before that, I had done a piece during the drought. Um, I was did a lot of work that was where I was just looking up at the sky right over uh, my backyard, so opposed to going to Denali or someplace far away, just right overhead, the clouds that would fly over and not rain for however many years that was. Um, and the Stanford emptied all of its fountains, which and this one was it's an iconic fountain called the Claw on the campus. And, but it was really ugly, empty. So I worked with undergraduates, and we painted um, this sky image on canvas and laid it in the bottom. So the the funniest moment was somebody who came over and looked in it, and then looked up at the sky, and like <laughs> kept trying to figure out like what <laughs> is going on. So, and then this was a piece that um, construction wall on the back of the cathedral that I did with the Sunday school kids actually before the residency, but um, so the first piece that I did, oh, the Rebecca and the, and the staff wanted me to do work with as many groups of people in the cathedral and the community as possible. So that was another part of this residency that was really fun, and I thought I should work with the um, kids, the boys at the cathedral school for boys first before they went on summer vacation. So I did a project with... Um, all the kids, I really wanted the idea that, um, and this was throughout the residency, the idea that uh, if we all do a little, it really adds up. That's sort of an environmental message, but really in everything. Um, so I had each each boy participate, and I worked with the classes um, um, one by one, and they each got a piece of shrinky dink. I don't know if anybody remembers this material, but it's this plastic that you can draw on, and I had them draw and paint with acrylic, which was kind of a nice uh, mixture of materials. And I wanted them to have a big enough piece so they had some freedom in it. And the mascot of the school is a hawk. So each boy could do an image of something having to do with the life of a hawk, um, their anatomy or... Um, their prey or their habitat, just some aspect of what makes up the life of a hawk. And then I shrunk them down in my oven, and they end up being about this big. Um, and here's it. They did beautiful pieces. And this was like K all the way up. They just did amazing work. Um, and then uh, I strung it all together in the shape of a hawk. Um, and so the idea was sort of the interconnectedness of nature um, and then also sort of the interconnectedness of us and, and how if we each do a part, how it can add up to something mm -hmm. um, big. So that was really fun and it was just a joy to work with all the students. There it is. It's installed oh, now um, on the library side. And I, it's sort of translucent, so it's a little bit like stained glass. I'm actually thinking I need to do more with Shrinky Dink because that's <laughs> really fun. So then this was a piece I had previously painted, and it's um, called The Fire Within. I, it was a piece, the first piece I made to use in a church. Um, and I had done a series based on the wildfires of California, just thinking about the destruction, but also the renewal and the rejuvenation that comes out of um, wildfire when it's in its natural kind of cycle. Um, and so using the idea of fire for Pentecost, where the symbol is a flame, um, I made these paintings, and they're uh, movable. So I've used them in different configurations in different churches. So here, we just kept moving them around. So we had it in this setting, and then um, we moved, put it around the baptismal font, and then I hung them from the balcony um, over about two weeks. And then my favorite was in the uh, cathedral, the, Chapel of Grace in these little, they just happen to fit in these niche. Um, and a lot of the pieces that I've been doing lately, and in particular for the cathedral, um, also have that idea of parts making up a whole just in their kind of formal structure. So this is a piece that's called Waterfront, and it's um, five panels of ocean, an ocean painting, with sort of two waves coming in. I actually started it on 
Trump's inauguration day and just painted the middle one. And Jim, my husband, came home and said, wow, you're working a lot. And then I just kept adding and adding and adding and adding. So but it was a good outlet for, uh, for everything. So, and that's how it turned out. Um, and it's, it's uh, hanging inside the cathedral. And then I got to work with the preschoolers, and that was really great. Um, in the summer, I did a, a, all projects that had to do with the ocean for a National Ocean Month, which really ended up being like maybe National Ocean Summer by the time we got done with everything. But um, so for the, the preschool kids, I had them do finger paint, and we did um, uh, something having to do with ocean fish, and they loved it. And that was just fun to see again how much kids... Just, you know, aw, that paint. They just, you know, and we just kept adding colors. It's like and making mud colors. pies, but with yeah. paint, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was really fun. This boy was just trans. He was like in a trance. He just <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but we added so many colors. They were like the muddiest version of ocean that you've ever seen. So I ended up calling them impressions of the ocean. And they were like, you know, really seaweedy maybe or something. But the most amazing thing happened over the summer all of the reds and yellows bleached out hmm. with the sun and they turned blue. So that was amazing. And the other thing is when that happened, all of their drawings started to show more somehow. So they're still up. They're a little warped from the sun, but they're outside. Um, and then I did a, the summer camp, and we did a lot in the summer camp. We, they did a mural of kelp forest, which is on the plaza still. And we did printmaking and clay and just all kinds of things um, having to do with the ocean. Um, and then for my own piece with the ocean, I decided to try to do um, a piece use also on the plaza using those columns. And that was sort of an interesting challenge because they're pretty far apart. So to try and make something that would still mm. kind of work as a piece with all the distance, and those are photographs um, of kind of water. Oh, I have an image of just one of these water ripples. Um, uh, and then this was another group activity that I really enjoyed. We did um, char uh, chalk drawing on the sidewalk around the steps um, on a Sunday afternoon, and I wanted to do um, life-size versions of whales and dolphin and um, turtles and uh, um, different mammals in the ocean. And so I sort of, I taped the outside of them and then I had these sidewalk paint rolls with rollers so that it was really easy. There was no, you didn't have to draw, know how to draw or anything. Anyone could um, participate and uh, chalk and brushes and all kinds of things. And um, I'm just people that had been in church or just people walking by I costed a lot of tourists and it was really fun and people wrote things and so there that's from above the humpback whale um, and for me it's just amazing to like physically see how huge these creatures are um, and to celebrate them and people wrote beautiful things um, like save our seas and uh, Oh, so it was really, really love. And now the people just like wrote their names or wrote this town in Europe where they were from or <laughs> whatever, all kinds of things. And then another group project that I did that had to do with the ocean was I made these ceramic waves and called the piece Stacked Waves. And the idea was that they are, you know, the waves that come in one by one. Um, and I made the ceramic pieces, they're sort of relief, um, and I made those at home and bisked them, and then I brought them in. And the congregation, either in a, after a service or a part of a service, um, put brush strokes down of the glaze. Um, so it was sort of a group project, and slowly it built up. Um, and I was hoping, in a way, to uh, share kind of that experience of um, painting and uh, maybe praying or just thinking about the thing you know mm -hmm. that you're that you're uh, working on um, and uh, I have a picture of sort of like 
the, the joy of before. So on the left, that's what it looked like when every one of these pieces, when um, it was done. And then when you open up the kiln, and I really wish everyone could have been there for that because it's yeah. so fun to open up the kiln and you don't really know what has happened. And I did have a few disasters, but I had enough <laughs> successes. So um, they are uh, installed on the outside of one of the front doors. Oh, there, I have a picture of it. So, and the idea of having everyone's marks and then baking them in so they're permanently there, I really liked that idea. Um, and then the last two pieces that I have here are the ones that I did for the um, actual climate summit. And I had the idea of um, putting banners of um, leaves on the columns for inside the church and I ended up photographing black oak trees on Page Mill Road in Palo Alto mm -hmm. and right around the corner from where I live um, and blowing them up and I used the printer I have to print them out and it was interesting because the church is really dark and so the, my first version looked great at home and I brought it in and um, it was you couldn't read that they were leaves at all they just kind of looked green your eye just could not grab onto anything so kind of started all over like went back out re-photographed and tried to photograph uh, more simple kind of areas where I could get a sense of the shape of the leaf mm -hmm. and um, white space or sky in between and then uh, printed them up and dominated the house <laughs> the cat thought it was just for her she would kind of walk right down the middle and I, that would ha I would have to lay them out to dry, basically, um, and then install them on the columns. So I love that. Did you know that there were going to be at the at the service, the multi faith service of commitment, wonder, and commitment? There were these were in the cathedral, and then but during the service, there were also. Um, trees that we've lovingly called Ents um, because they, they're people on stilts dressed as trees. Oh and um, did you know that, that was... Yeah. This one. Yeah. Did you know that was happening? I didn't know about the trees. You didn't know but, about the, yeah. um, I was in on the other things. We dropped little oak leaves from up high. Um, and I was on, in on that. In fact, yeah. I sourced them. I found a woman in Washington State who makes handmade oak leaves, paper, out of paper, but she... Um, put seeds in them, so they kind of have this built-in symbolism yeah. of, oh, there's one. There's one, yeah. 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 And they're yeah. basil, which she told me is easy to grow, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the way those all that all interacted yeah. um, together. It was really yeah. beautiful. And, and the imagery I wanted to um, really make, you f make us feel like we're an ant or a bug or something like the scale of the leaves was important to me because of our dependence on this kind of everywhere plant, this everywhere mm -hmm. um, life form that completely we're dependent on and we're may maybe more dependent than ever to help consume some of the carbon in mm -hmm. the atmosphere, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then the last one. Yeah. Oh, I also did some banners for the service, um, which was interesting because they were very specific emblems like, um, uh, renewable energy, renewable art, agriculture, and um, transportation. So that was f fun to think about how I might be able to do that. And I looked at uh, G's Bend quilts, um, which I don't know if, if you're familiar with. There are these beautiful, amazing quilts. So borrowed a tiny bit from that. And then this, the the globe. Mm. So and that was a challenging project. <laughs> it was so big and those wonderful guys got up there the riggers so climbers um and that is a nasa image that i that is open for public use so yeah. and it changed a lot it was originally going to be just the earth covering the window and then because of um technical reasons we just couldn't pull that off so i redesigned it and actually really like it more i mm -hmm. just it's so much yeah 
It says so many more different things, yeah. too. It's so evocative, having that. I've described it as, as, you know, like peering into the center of the earth, like peering into the soul. Everything is stripped away, and we just peer into the soul of the earth mm -hmm. um, there. It's so evocative. I love it. Thanks. I love it. Um, and all of these pieces, you know, I'm thinking about this conversation that you have with your art, with, with nature that you invite us into, and how much of that conversation is also a part of where your art is installed. You know, this conversation that you had with the cathedral throughout each of these, the landscape of the cathedral throughout each of these pieces is really wonderful. Yeah, I mean, and that was a really interesting part of it, to have because um, the, you know, the sort of the canvas of the architecture mm -hmm. to have that interface with the imagery was just exciting and, and challenging. Yeah. Oh, fun. Um, so clearly you use a lot of different media yeah. <laughs> for, your, um, for your art. Uh, photographs, chalk, shrinky dinks. Um, uh, you've talked already a little bit about your process, but tell us some more about your process and how do you decide which materials to use? And um. Well, this was, I mean, I have to say that this residency was really a chance for me to explore some things I haven't done before. So I've mainly used photography as kind of a sketch material. Like I'll just take photographs and I'll do sketches and that'll be the material that I draw from for my paintings and prints. And this is the first time that I've used photography as the final product. Um, and so that was really exciting and then to do it so huge was mm -hmm. like enormously challenging but fun. Yeah. Um, and, and everything, you know, chalk and the tricky dink, it was just, a, and ceramics, I've done ceramics but I haven't done anything that big. So I'm really so grateful for the chance to um, expand as an artist mm -hmm. in that way. And it was um, fun to try to design for the group projects in a way that there was enough structure um, so that people felt comfortable. Because it's so overwhelming, I think, to just sort of have a wide open, kind of the blank paper kind of syndrome. So to have something that's got enough structure, but then enough um, room for the participant to feel like they can have some creativity and expression and, and kind of tap into that joy of, mm -hmm. of making marks and um, coloring and whatever, all those things, right. so. Lovely, being part of something bigger. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, your installations um, were, these last especially, were part of the Global Climate Action Summit, if we just described. What do you think art, um, adds to this, to the conversation of something like the Global Climate Action Summit? I mean, I think that art can function in lots of different ways. There has been a lot of um, environmental art that has tried to just educate and um, also maybe get people concerned, worried, alarmed. I mean, my work, I feel like I want um, to help be a part of kind of the creative response and the hopefulness mm -hmm. that you have to have to like go forward with this. And I think that there is so much hope. We've made so much progress already. There's more to do, but um, uh, so I think that that's where I want my work to, to fit in. Uh -huh. um, and I think that anything that is really important to culture, art, Kind of both reflects and then also informs, um, and this is this is a huge it's a huge thing. So I think we'll see more and more mm -hmm. art in different ways too. Yeah. Um, for those who might be surprised about a cathedral having an artist in residence or a park, a national park having an artist in residence, what would you what would you say mm -hmm. to them? Well, it's been interesting with the cathedral, and particularly because people will say, "Ha, huh, the church has got an artist residency," and then they kind of go, "Oh, wait a minute, the church is." done a lot with art over the centuries. <laughs> like, oh, that makes perfect sense. So I really think it's interesting because um, I want art to be really a part of everyday life and a part of our culture and our surroundings and whatever is important to us. And um, I mean, museums are great, but there's a way in which that they're kind of by definition outside. I mean, there's of just our everyday. Um, and I think 
in these other places, that's, I mean, these are, these are the things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes a lot of sense, and it's a great idea. <laughs> uh, and it, it's also been inviting people. You've been so, so um, uh, welcoming to people into your artistic pr process through all of these pieces of art to allow people to engage in that way. Thanks. Um, that's lovely. Thank you. And to me, all those churches in the European all over the world, those are art of the same glass world as a classical art. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. 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 I'm going to ask one more question, then we're going to move into uh, inviting questions from you all. There are cards that are being passed around. Rebecca's passing cards around if you'd like to, if you'd like to pose a question. While you all are doing that, um, I am going to ask, who, who has influenced you? Who's some, who are some of the artists um, who have influenced you? Or uh, otherwise? Yeah. The artists who I love the most and I had to, the old desert island like if I had to take would be Rembrandt I really love Rembrandt I think it's um kind of the the way he handled paint and drew but also the content like the sense of spirituality and sense of the mind mm -hmm. just amazing and I was actually thinking about this because uh <clears throat> of what's going on with Me Too movement the way he dealt with depicted women was really <clears throat> just remarkable and unlike um anyone in his era it's it's like he just had a different perspective and also uh as a christian he the way he depicted um parables and parts of the bible was was his own interpretation and um i just think it's really exciting so uh, he's the one i sort of go back to the most but then i really love um Joan Mitchell, I don't know if you know her work, but um, abstract expressionist, who, and Monet and Van Gogh, and she actually also, there's sort of connection between all those artists. Um, Bill Viola, uh, um, a, um, video artist. So those are some of the people. Nice, thank you. All right. Oop, I might need my glasses for this. <laughs> Thank you. What was your favorite work for the cathedral and why? Uh, you got, I, I, asked, was, I asked her that one right before we started, and I here it comes again. I was afraid someone would ask that. You know, I really don't know. I just l love doing all of them, and um, even putting these slides together, like, Every single one of them. I mean, the, the preschool thing was just so much fun, like all of them. Um, I mean, maybe the one that ended up, well, either the steps or the oak leaves, I think probably <coughs> in terms of just something that really challenged me on every level, I would mm -hmm. say. But ended up needing some of that math you took at Yale, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't take any math at Yale, actually, but yeah. <laughs> High school. High school. <laughs> Is there anything you wanted to do but didn't get a chance to do? I did everything. <laughs> <laughs> now I worked. I worked like nonstop. Yeah, for you six were prolific months. during these so, six months. <laughs> um, so no, I was really pleased that we we fit in. I mean, I do have. All right, I do have a few other extra ideas, but I really got <laughs> the main ones done that I really wanted to. And I was so glad that we that I got to do the. Um, earth windows and also the oak leaves on the inside and that mm. they were up at the same time. I was really thrilled. Yeah. So. Yeah. Are you working on anything new? What is next for you? Ah. Other than a, a break, maybe. <laughs> I, I have a little break and go visit my parents. So um, I'm working on a commission right now that's a sky. So it seems like I'm going back into sky working on a commission for a family of a sky painting. And then I've just been asked by the Palo Alto Art Center to do a, um, an installation somewhere in their either indoor gallery or outside that is sky for 
in the spring. So I'm not sure what that'll be, but so that's next. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <clears throat> so um, first, a thank you um, oh. coming from the folks here. A rainbow is made of an immense myriad of water drops shining light into all the colors. Thank you for your prolific art and hospitable works and presence. As a fellow artist, I wins whimsically consider myself a later day Hudson River school lady. I see you in this <laughs> art um, made in awe for mystical nature. That's really nice. Yeah, Thank you. Lovely. Lovely. Um, Oh, more appreciation. Um, I would like to express appreciation for you, Suki. <laughs> Watching your process evolve over your residency was such a pleasure. Oh, thanks. So waves, you feeling this waves of appreciation <laughs> so coming nice. from Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, have you seen the amazing stirring visual show at Fort Mason on the environment and global warming? That's up now? Is that's up now, No, I, I have not. Well, maybe that's what I'll do um, with... Yeah, I hope this will inspire you to paint more on the issue of global warming. Oh, and today is the show's last day. Okay, well, <laughs> that's what I'll... Oh, all right. Good this afternoon. Um, um, do you think you will find yourself um, doing more art uh, related to um, what's happening with the, the, the climate and particularly with your... Um, you know, this intimate relationship that your art has with, with nature, how do you see what's happening reflective in your art as, as it evolves? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I started, it's my, it's, I mean, I think a lot of people feel like, oh, I've become an activist and I didn't mean to lately. And I feel sort of like that, like I was so drawn to nature, but now, you know, there's this, this other incredibly important aspect to it. So, Yes, I, th I think I will be. Mm. Um, and, I mean, one of the things I think I hope to express is that um, it's, uh, there's so many side benefits to all the changes that we're making, and um, even, like, within our individual lives, like, we put the Solar City um, approached our neighborhood and said if, about 12 years ago, if we got 40 houses together, they would give us a deep discount. This is on the Stanford campus. Um, and so we did that, and that's great, and so we haven't had an electric bill in 12 years, so that's nice. But the other thing is, it ended up shading our house, and our house is much cooler, so we don't need air conditioning. And there are all these things like this, like, uh, you know, a car that doesn't put out carbon also doesn't put out, um, you know, the kind of soot that would affect asthma and babies and um, people who have heart disease. So I just think that it's like the... It's an, the, all the changes that we're going to make are going to be have all kinds of other uh, ramifications that I think are exciting, and it's mm -hmm. a really creative time. Yeah, it is a really creative time, and I love that you're even when your art has that um, that um, aspect of activism in it, that it's always fundamentally about relationship hmm. as well. It seems. I mean, that's what that's I nice. see in it anyway. <laughs> um, so what was your first media, and how did you add to the next and the next? Um, just in my work, mm -hmm. or not the residency, just my work? Yep, I think yeah. your work generally. Yes. So I actually started as a graphic designer. Um, when I finished college, I thought I would start working in the visual field, um, and I just kind of I'd done a little bit of graphic design in college, but basically thought, well, I'll start with this, see how it, see how it works out. So I worked in New York City um, as a graphic designer and really enjoyed that a lot, but then started painting um, weekends and uh, got to the point where I just really wanted to see if I could make a go of the painting. And the final project was where I realized I just had to do this was I was working on a catalog <clears throat> of an art exhibition at LA MOCA, and um, as I was pasting, it was just before computer, so pasting in these images of these different art pieces of art and the titles and everything, I thought, oh, I really would like to be on the other side of this, I'd like to try and be the person making the artwork. Mm. So that sort of led, led to the next step. 
what kind of paper was the waterfall on the stairs and leaf images printed on? And did you print them yourself? Yeah, so I, the uh, steps were on basically kind of a wallpaper paper. And um, the oak leaves were on a lighter paper because they, uh, they're really, they're like 34 feet tall and I was trying to keep them as light as possible. Um, and I, I have a, pr a printer that didn't look that big on the internet when I bought it. Um, and it was, it was on, it was pretty cheap, like a lot of these things, like the printer wasn't that expensive, but the ink, ink is what you end up paying for. But then it got delivered and it's like, oh, okay, so this is sizable, but it will print out 24 width. So I can, and you can just do a roll, so you can just keep going. And that's been really uh, freeing to be able to, do that. And, and it, even though the ink is expensive, it's still less than getting a printer to getting do it. Um, so. Did you, when you um, realized that those panels were too dark, yeah. did you, had you printed, had you just printed one or had you printed a whole oh, bunch of them? I had only printed one, but I had done like all the artwork for a whole, you know, 12. So it's like, all right, well, <laughs> start, start over. over again. <laughs> but it was really interesting because it took me by surprise. Um, the, the the amount, just the way you're, I just could not figure it out. I could not read it. It was really interesting. And then the other thing with the columns is there's um, two in the middle on both sides are, are even darker. So then I had to kind of choose ones that, I actually decided to choose ones that weren't, your eye would kind of move through. And there, I didn't try to make them light enough with detail so that you'd stop and look. I just sort of had those be just, like passerbys. And so the very front and the very back of the church have ones where I really have more detail and I want you to really look. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so more appreciation here. Tell everyone to go check out the glacier art in the hall here. It's literally <laughs> right outside, um, right outside the door. And um, on that note I think checking out all of the art because it is going to be um it's going to be starting to come down on starting Tuesday. to come down on on Tuesday so yeah. make your way around and uh check up all check out all of the um incredible art that um that is still hanging here um your installations have incredible logistics great <laughs> job uh uh, hanging them and envisioning how to hang them and doing all of that logistical. Uh, yeah, that logistical was another work. fun, challenging, sometimes a little nerve-wracking <laughs> aspect to it. But I mean, all these, all the details of kind of creative work are, I think, are really enjoyable from you know the conception through mm -hmm. the whole process, including those details of getting it up. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Um, well, thank you. I think that that is um, the questions that we have yeah, uh, for just, today. Is there anything that I you just, would like to... Yeah, I just would really like to thank, again, the, the community and the church and anyone who participated. And it was really such an amazing experience, and I'm really grateful um, and, you know, still overwhelmed and um, was just a blast. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Suki. <laughs> It's been a it's been a joy, and there's been lots of wonder to see what what's coming next um, <laughs> over the course of this this past six months. Um, so, just some final announcements. Thank you all for for being here and being a part of this morning forum. Uh, please come back and join us next week. Uh, Malcolm Young, our dean, will be here next week, and. Um, uh, of course, you're welcome to join upstairs at the 11 o'clock service this morning. And um, we welcome your support of this forum, and you may do so on the, on the way out to there. And, of course, thanks again, Suki Bryan, for being here this morning, but also for, for the way that you have um, so fully given of yourself to the cathedral and this community over the last, these last months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.